happy to announce you that, uh, that the Tosca has arrived. She's going to do the keynote lecture now. I have to upload her presentation. It's based on a non to uh, contact tomographic principles. We have uh, either a laser uh, emitted device or a uh, 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 80 LEDs uh, uh, illumination, a CCD camera, and the rotating sample founder. During our measurements, uh, then the light is emitted in the source, enters the imaging sen sensor, passes through the Xi Xi translation stage where the light is being transformed properly in order to pass through the sample, which is placed on the rotation stage to the sample counter. The CCD camera is placed in the transmission geometry and collects the light that passes through the sample. The sample is illuminated to an almighty point at a full rotation 6.60 degrees for each step. Here is our apparatus, and in an easier way, you can see it here. Here is uh, uh, the laser emitting uh, diodes, uh, 80 laser emitting diodes. We have uh, um, then uh, a diffuser, then uh, we have um, a mirror, then the light comes to a perpendicular polarizer and it goes to the rotation stage where the sample uh, is, is uh, hold it and gives a rotation about 6.60 degrees, and then uh, th it's, uh, it passes through a tube, a black tube, where, uh, um, and, and then it goes to a, another polarizer which is parallel, and the front of the lens of the uh, uh, charge coupled design, which is cooled. And then we have uh, uh, our uh, images. Do I have a pointer? Hmm? Here we can see the region. The first is um, a common nevus, the second is a dysplastic nevus, and the third is a melanoma. As you can see, uh, we have the cellophical Then we have the three D reconstructions, and we have, we have we can see here. <laughs> you can see here uh, the, the graphs. Uh, you can see here uh, that uh, 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 there is a big difference between the common evus and the melanoma lesions, as you can see here from that. And you see here uh, with uh, our method, with the attenuation coefficient method, the three D reconstruction from uh, the, 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 this point. And these are the controls. Uh, here is uh, uh, normal skin here and the mangioma and the common nevus. You can see that they are quite different. And these uh, have been arranged in the same scale as the previous one with nine maximum. And you can see that they are much lower than uh, uh, the pigmented skin lesions. In this graph, we've tried to compare the, uh, our uh, uh, findings with optical community tomography with histological results. And you can see we have a very good agreement with R square uh, equivalent to almost nine. So uh, sure. it's impressive that th there were uh, almost the same with our method of optical CT and the histological method. This gives us the opportunity to have a quick assessment of the lesion even w uh, before the histology results, not only of the type of the lesion, but of the depth of the lesion. Oh, thank you very much. There was Can you hear me? Yes. that is a 
big difference in the media values between malignant melanoma and uh, simply nevi, and they are not In uh, this table, you see the six examples that uh, we have used uh, of uh, uh, nevi and the controls. You can see that uh, the attenuation coefficient is much higher due to increased scattering from pigmented skin lesions uh, with dysplasia and architectural disorders than are common skin lesions. In our initial experiments that we used laser beam, this is a, a, a lesion excited with laser uh, with uh, pseudocolors. This is thought of fluorescence, and uh, here is a normalization of autofluorescence uh, of uh, autofluorescence uh, um, uh, normalization of auto. Yes, okay. The basic principles are uh, light source or white lamps as the one we finally used. The illumination, a light detector with a CCD camera, a detection of the light signals from multiple parts, the two polarizers, the perpendicular one I've shown you previously, and uh, the horizontal one, which only to delineate the, all, uh, the borders of the lesion. And uh, all of them are based on physics laws and mathematical algorithms that, could, uh, that were homemade in the Institute of Laser and Electronic Structures of the University Hospital of Crete. And uh, uh, here is again our system. I have described it already. The light from the source, which consists of eight white LEDs, I, I told it, going to diffuser, passes through the sample. The sample is illuminated uniform in a linear polarized light and the full rotation of six points uh, takes place. Due to the diffuse propagation through the sample, the transmitted light emerging with random polarization. The detection is performed with CCD camera through a cross polarizer, which eliminates all linear polarized light that transmitted outside the sample. This arrangement aims at increased contracts and dynamic range of acquired images. Further elimination of ambient lights performed by a black totally absorbing tube, which is placed in the light path between the sample and the second polarizer. The optical axis of the polarizers being parallel for measuring the light that passes around the sample and obtaining the surface shape of the sample. The optical axis of the polarizers being perpendicular for measuring only the light that transmitted through the sample and mapping the optical portals or properties inside the sample. Our technique to obtain 3D images uh, uh, absorbs our attenuation coefficient is quantitative. So we have taken into account both the intensity of the illumination using uh, uh, reference measurement. Uh, this enables us to obtain quantitative map of the absorption coefficient by making use of Beer's law, which relates the amount of decay in intensity to the amount of absorption present per centimeter of tissue traveled. In principle, different types of tissues will present different types of the absorption coefficient, hopefully enabling the distinction between tissue types. For this to be done, we first need to measure the correspondence between the absorption coefficient we measure and the type of the tissue present. This will give us a lookup table that will, in principle, enable us to distinguish between types of tissues in 3D by using quantitative values of the absorption coefficient. What we have achieved up to now, uh, we're able to present 3D images of the attenuation coefficient of the transmitted light according to this formula. Okay, there is, these are some grams examples. Here we have a common use. This is a 3D reconstruction with pseudocolors. This is a, a 3D reconstruction according to the beer law what you can see here, white is the black region. The diagram of attenuation coefficient from the surface of the lesion to the tissue area. And then we have achieved an automatic depth measurement with image A uh, with the exponential offset. 
and uh, uh, so we were able, if we consider that the pixel has a value, we have measured this, is about uh, 128 uh, 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 microns, then the depth of this region is 0.3 millimeters. table is in complete accordance with histology results. This is a metastatic melanoma. The 3D reconstruction of metastatic melanoma with pseudocolors. The 3D reconstruction according to the BLO attenuation coefficient. Here uh, is a measure. It's from uh, 4 to 91. It's about uh, uh, 80, uh, 84. Uh, and we have measured the depth with uh, a method we have uh, uh, prepared at the uh, Institute of Electronic Structure and Laser. is about uh, 78. So the depth of the region is 0 0.6 six millimeters of depth. This is a melanoma in situ. The 3D reconstruction with pseudocolors. This is a, a 3D reconstruction according to the beer lambert attenuation coefficient. You can see what is white is a lesion previously mentioned, the 3D reconstruction of the lesion. Oh, okay. I'm going to go back, sorry. This is um, the diagram of the attenuation coefficient from the surface of the lesion to the tissue area. And again, here we have the automatic depth measurement with image A, as we're able to, in to do. And we can see that the depth is about 0.4 millimeters. The diagram of the attenuation coefficient from the surface of normal skin to the tissue area. This is a simple nevus, a normal nevus. Uh, the 3D reconstruction with pseudocolors. The 3D reconstruction called to the beer lumber attenuation coefficient. The diagram of the attenuation coefficient from the surface of the lesion to the tissue area. This is uh, uh, this is um, a melanoma in situ. The three D reconstruction with pseudo colors. The 3D reconstruction according to the beer lambert law attenuation coefficient. The diagram of the attenuation coefficient from the surface to the tissue area. The automatic measurement, so we can see it's 0.7 millimeter. So as I have shown you in the initial table, it is in complete accordance with histologic findings we have taken one week later. So, uh, I will tell you later on this. The diagram of the attenuation coefficient of the lesion and the normal skin around it. This is a dysplastic nevus. The 3D reconstruction with pseudocolors. The 3D reconstruction according to the beer lambert law attenuation coefficient. The diagram of the attenuation coefficient from the surface of the lesion to the tissue area. The automatic measurement, which uh, the depth is about 1.2 millimeters in complete accordance with the histologic finds obtained uh, one week later. This is a, a melanoma of speech. A 3D reconstruction with pseudocolors. The 3D reconstruction according to the beer lambert law attenuation coefficient. So as you can see, white is the black region of the lesion. 
the diagram of the attenuation coefficient from the surface of the lesion to the tissue area, the automatic measurement with image J gives only depth of 0.2 millimeters because um, uh, Elentigo maligna uh, uh, is a very um, flat lesion and doesn't have uh, enough depth. This is a simple nevus again, the reconstruction, the diagram, and the depth is very small, 0.8 millimeters. This is a, uh, this is a, a dysplastic nevus, the 3D reconstruction of the beer color, the 3D reconstruction according to the beer number to attenuation coefficient. The diagram of the attenuation coefficient from the surface to the tissue area, and the automatic depth measurement with image J. Here we have again uh, this plastic nevus, the 3D reconstruction with pseudo colors. The 3D reconstruction according to the beer number to attenuation coefficient. The diagram of the attenuation coefficient from the surface of the lesion to the tissue area. The automatic measurement will give us a depth of three millimeters in complete accordance with histologic findings. Here we have a melanoma. The 3D reconstruction with pseudo colors. The 3D reconstruction according to the beer number low attenuation coefficient. The diagram of the attenuation coefficient from the surface of the lesion to the tissue area. And the automatic measurement could give a depth of 2.2 millimeters. And here you can see the histologic picture has exactly the same depth, 2.2 millimeters. And uh, the last one that I have to present you is another melanoma. The 3D reconstruction with pseudo colors. The diagram of the delineation coefficient from the surface of the lesion to the tissue area. This is again the automatic depth method with image A. Uh, in a way, we have with in, in the course of producing an optical biopsy system. We were we did not believe it initially, but fi finally, after 16, of course, this is not a big number. We have to make more experiments. It seems that we can have good results before having the histologic uh, 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 results, and then be able to the physician is able to consider what treatment could take about this lesion. And after he waits about the histological results, he goes further on to the treatment. And again, you can see the depth is exactly the same with histology. As you can see here, I'm saying, a mathematical serratum transformed in two dimensions, named after the Austrian mathematical John Randon, is the integral transform consisting of the integral of a fraction of a straight lines. What I would like to mention here is the last one. The inverse of the random transform on which our method is based can be used to reconstruct the original density from the scattering data, and thus it forms a mathematical underpinning for tomographic reconstruction. I would like to mention there are some other methods as a, a uh, optical coherence tomography, uh, the ultrasound method, uh, the, um, um, uh, and some other methods were trying to do that, but they are not able not to uh, uh, give um, the exact depth of the lesion or to discriminate between lesions. So we think uh, that's a new method that uh, has is going to give to help a lot the physicians for an early uh, assessment of the lesion and uh, 
uh, for taking the decision of what treatment they should take. I will not explain it. Thank you for your attention.